So we're starting our year three look back at uh, the Quail administration. And actually, we're starting with you, Mr. Mm. Quail. And sometimes, yeah, you near the end, near the end. And uh, we, we have a chance once a year to sit everyone down, hopefully, and get their views. So what better? Start with the very top. Uh, look back on your year two, I don't know if you remember much about it, and I was just thinking all the things that haven't yet probably been resolved or, or where you're going. Uh, how do you feel it's going? I mean, let's start there. Well, you tell. I think it's going exceptionally well. Everything We, we set a programme for government, it was five years, where the public can clearly see what we're, want, what we're going to do, how we're going to deliver it, how our performance is going to be measured, who's going to take responsibility, and it's there, it's updated regularly so the public can clearly see for themselves what is happening on their behalf. We've also had significant work off Ireland, and I suppose if you were to ask me what's the thing I'm probably the most proud of in um, the last 12 months, it's been our international work. That really has been... International being uh, United Kingdom mostly, though, yeah? Yeah, it's our, yeah, it's, it's our external... Rela well, not just the United Kingdom. We've had substance requirements, and that's not um, something you 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 inject or, or, or whatever. It, it, it's the physical... Um, location of people on the Isle of Man, businesses on the Isle of Man. The, the European Union international community wanted a commitment. We gave that commitment. We were on a potential blacklist. We're off that. We've got the UK, sorry, the EU and the OECD saying that the Isle of Man, that they're more than happy with what we're complying with. That was a major issue. And you think, well, why should that impact me on the Isle of Man? But there are thousands of jobs at stake if, if you get blacklisted with something on the international community, it means that any business wanting to do business on, with, with, from the UK or the international world with the Isle of Man would have to go through extra layers of paperwork, treacle effectively, to do business because you are a blacklisted jurisdiction. We are not a blacklisted jurisdiction. We've made sure that we comply with all the latest rules and regulations to ensure that our businesses can compete and get on with their lives yeah, without... You, you've hit businesses. I mean, you know, the finance sector has got a very low um, sort of feel-good factor at the minute, hasn't it? Well, take that in context with uh, the, the fact that all the other sectors were so high that mm. th there someone had to, to have, have the least confidence. That used but to be our big earners, right? Well, the, the economy is, is growing. If you compare the Isle of Man with our, some of our friends and colleagues in the Crown Dependencies, they've been experiencing a, a slowdown in, in growth, and we haven't. We've been growing our economy in an incredibly difficult time where the uncertainty of Brexit means that people are holding back from investing because they want to make sure, they want to know, they want to have some certainty before they, they, they invest. So for us to continue to, to grow, we can't take that for granted. How do you take growing? Is it, is it just by GDP? Is it by how many people are living here? Well, it's, it, 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 it's both in a way. In, in GDP, you can say things can affect that. Jobs is key. So up until the 12 months before May of this year, there's now 1,075 additional people paying tax and NI. Companies have reported a growth in real income of 9.1%. We've increased the tax allowance for all our public to 14,000 um, 14, each, and all the benefits were increased significantly more than inflation. Inflation is running at 2.1% at the moment, and we've been increasing benefits, child family allowance, about 5%, so between uh, yes. 29 and 5% and Remind 20%. Me, how, do we, how do we do with the UK, though? Weren't we behind or we ahead again, or what? The, the, there was one area where mobility um, vehicles, we were behind with the UK, and we've now caught up right. and, and, and increased that. So... But you can only we put three million extra into the police force this year. But we've only been able to do that because the economy is successful and there's a surplus for the first time in ten years. Does it that, come from the drugs haul money? No, that sort of thing. that's completely no, separate. This that's is purely growth in the economy. This mm. is treasury receipts coming in being greater than than our outgoings. Now we can't take that for granted. It's taken an awful lot of hard work to get us in that position, and we can't be complacent because we know Brexit is coming. The way it's looking, it's going to be a no-deal UK crashing out. So we've got to factor all that in and ensure that whatever happens, the Isle of Man is agile and is able to respond to whatever's thrown at us. To allow this not to be dated too much, I'm probably not going to do too much about Brexit. Cause yeah. We touched that so many times and it's so fluid. Who yeah. knows where we're going to be in the next 10 minutes? Well, you, can't, you can't direct the wind. You trim no. your sails accordingly. Um, 
Go back to your last year's interview. Um, we we're talking about the whole business about jets and all that business about yeah. The, the, yeah, the UK was coming in, looking at the books, and you hadn't had the report then. It's all not happened. I, I, I mean, that's I, another year on, right? I, it, it is, and I have to say it's incredibly disappointing for me because where I take reassurance, Paul, is that we did our own internal investigation and found nothing wanting and to date we've not been told to change anything that we've been doing so the report has been done it's hanging not, over you though but yeah. it is hanging over and I, I keep on getting promised that you'll have it by the end of this month you'll have it by the end of this month and you're right it's hanging over us and I, I felt it was a slur on the Isle of Man's good name and reputation and the minute we get it obviously we will be showing it. So it's just their end that's hanging, holding up. Well, I, I suppose if, if you analyse it, to us it's a major problem. Mm. To politicians in Westminster where you, you've got a new Prime Minister, you've got Brexit, constant fighting, they're, they're struggling to get on with anything in their country whilst they're fighting over whether you should have a negotiated agreement on Brexit, etc., or yeah. whether you crash out or whether you reverse and have a second vote, second referendum. That's their focus. And our report and dealing with it, whilst it's incredibly important to us and we have lobbied, they've had changes. I've spent three years working, building up a really good working relationship with Robin Walker, who's the um, Under Secretary of State for Dexu, and just gone. like that, gone. And he's not been, he's gone off to the Scottish office and Northern Ireland office, and I've got a new um, person, Mr. Dudridge, to, to, to deal with, and I've already spoken to him, but I've got to build that up again. So. I suppose it's just, it's just life. Let's just talk about you as, as a constituent MHK for a bit. We don't really touch on you that much because you're so busy doing what you're doing in this room. I mm -hmm. suppose. How have you found that? Juggling these yeah, things? Yeah, well, in, in my first five years, I, I, and I worked on with, with the commissioners in the relevant areas, new car parks, speed limits, refuges, the heritage trail from um, Braddon through to Crosby so that the constituents could walk. I attend all the local things. I still do that where I'm invited to you know to go mm. to, to that sort of thing but I, I suppose I, you, you look at it you come in your second term and you think well where can I really help my constituents and the best place to help your constituents is by growing the economy and protecting jobs so if you are growing the economy we just put three million pounds extra into the police force and that will enable the police to employ a significant number of extra police on vehicle um, control speeding. The biggest constituency problem I get in middle is speeding traffic. If you, if you want to get into Douglas, you've got to go through Santon, you've got to go through Braddon, you've got to go through Moran, all my three elements of the constituency of middle. And speeding traffic is the biggest concern, and therefore having more bobbies on the beat, monitoring out with the radar gun and prosecutions, that will help make it's safer for the residents of middle so therefore by growing the economy protecting the jobs of the people in middle enabling better facilities to be put in to look after them as i've given you the example with the three million for the police yeah. the health service review all these things can, are only possible because we've been growing the economy